अमृत नाम ठाकुर का पाइयो जिसका सभस अधारो गॉड्स इमोटल नेम इज ऑल्सो देयर विच इज अ सपोर्ट टू एवरी वन अमृत नाम ठाकुर का पाइयो जिसका सभसु अधारो जे को खावे जे को भुंचे ते इसका हो ही उद्धारो वन हु ईट्स दीज थिंग्स विल बी सेव्ड एनी वन हु विल प्रैक्टिस ट्रुथ कंटेंटमेंट contemplation and would recite his name will be liberated so it is being said that the adi granth is a huge plate a huge plate which is serving truth contentment and contemplation and the base the aadhar of all of it is the amrit name the immortal name of thakur the lord and the one who will eat the things that are there on the plate will be saved truth contentment contemplation and the name of the lord so nilesh is asking how to practice truth and contentment because these are not known yet and are the subject of the quest actually how can contentment be practiced in a state of not being contented and if it was known and practiced means the practitioner is already liberated so it is asked to recite the name of god and it is said that the name of god supports everyone but one is also asked to practice truth and contentment so it seems that the name of god is not enough and some more understanding is needed for liberation and to behold the practice of truth and contentment kindly guide you may not know the truth but nilesh do you also not know the faults and if you have no inkling of the faults then even the truth cannot save you when it is said practice truth it is to remind you that there is something beyond the ordinary falseness of our occupations the absolute truth is obviously unthinkable unreachable but in the light of the absolute truth you keep ascending up the floors of relative consciousness
you keep seeing what is false about your life. Obviously, even when you see what is false about your life, that does not yield you the absolute truth to live in. Rejecting one falseness, you have no option but to enter a relatively less severe falseness. And that is all that the mind living in the dualistic, relativistic state can do. A man used to live in a four-story house and it was very cold. It was winters and the ground floor in such houses because it does not receive any sunlight turns especially cold. So this fellow is on the ground floor and he is feeling cold and uncomfortable and he is suffering. But it's night. It's night and it's a dark night. Not only is there no sun, there happen to be no moon and stars either. He has no option but to keep suffering at the ground level. Then comes the dawn and then arises the sun. And please see carefully what happens. In the sunlight, he is able to rise up the floors. In the sunlight, he is able to rise up the floors and he reaches the top floor and finds ample sunlight there. And now he can bathe in the sunlight. Has he reached the sun? Has he reached the absolute sun itself? No. But the blessings of the sun, the presence of sun has enabled him to rise up the relative floors on the earth. And because he did what he could, he could not travel all the way up to the sun, could he? All that his relative and little mortal powers allowed him to do was to rise up the four floors. He could not do any better than that. But just rising up the four floors brought a lot of sunlight to his life. It's a miracle. Nothing absolute has happened and nothing absolute is possible to happen to the little relative being living in a dualistic universe. Four floors. That's all he can climb. Four floors. But just climbing up the four floors gave him ample sunlight. And how could he climb up the four floors? using the sunlight. The night was so pitch dark. 
he could not even move from one room to the other on the ground floor itself how could he have climbed up and even if he could, would have climbed up what would have he found maybe bitterly cold gust of wind on the top floor this is how it proceeds when it is said remember the truth it is meant that you must climb up from your basement to the floors that are possible to you that is sadhana sadhana does not take you to the infinite it only takes you to your higher and higher possibilities ground floor first floor second floor third floor fifth and you come to a point when in spite of still living in the relative world you find yourself blessed with enough sunlight what is the fourth floor the fourth floor is the limit of your corporal power the fourth floor is the point beyond which you cannot rise any higher that's what the absolute is waiting for even the third floor won't suffice if you can come up till the fourth come up till the fourth and yet there you will suddenly and magically find the sun now look at the distance between the earth and the sun what are your four floors compared to that distance they are absolutely nothing we are talking of millions and billions of kilometers here are we not so the sun was actually millions and billions of kilometers away but you received the sun just by climbing up four floors you didn't have to climb that high that is sadhana you cannot do any better than that then that's what you offer to the lord given my body given the power of my legs given my feeble state given the way i am born this is the highest i could climb using my personal powers four floors beyond that i anyway cannot come lord and then the lord says if you cannot come beyond the four floors i will come down to your terrace how does that sound but even if i come down to your terrace you will not receive me if you continue to insist that you will live on the ground floor there might be bright sun on the top floor but if you are living even on the third floor what are you receiving nothing this is what the truth demands of you and that is why so many people do not receive any grace because they are not prepared to come even atop their own building no one is asking you to invent and manufacture a rocket a rocket that can travel right up to the sun there exists no such rocket just as the truth is unapproachable the sun too is unapproachable using any thing that humans manufacture but there is one little thing you can do i am repeating it and what is it climb up your personal four floors and you will find that the sun has come down to embrace you sun enough for you beyond that you anyway cannot tolerate or can you mind you you remember that fellow in the greek mythology who wanted to fly up to the sun and what happened to him oh his wings all got burnt there was actually a meltdown 
we anyway cannot go up to him he has to come down to us the sun has to shine on our terrace that is the only way human beings can receive him and that is unconditional is it not so grace is unconditional still you have to do something to receive it what is it that you have to do do your best if there are four floors move your lazy legs and climb up now you see what is meant by practicing the truth practicing the truth does not mean that you leap up to the sun and swallow it whole practicing truth means that if you are living at the ground floor of your consciousness which is full of falseness can you be a little more truer can you be a little less false and that is the first floor now having come to the first floor can you turn in words and remove a little more falseness from your life and now you come to the second floor now can you be a little more determined and honest and remove more falseness from your life the third floor now you are tired now further ascent looks almost impossible but can you now muster faith and carry your aching body right up to the top your personal top which is the himalayan top is anyway not accessible to you your personal top which is just the fourth floor can you haul yourself up to this summit and if you can then you have done the best that was possible to you and you will be blessed we do not live in absolutes nilesh your question is based on a very naive assumption you are saying if the false is known then one is anyway living in the truth no that is not how consciousness operates human consciousness is relative some are false some are falser and there is nobody who does not know that he is not false spiritual practice is about not remaining false at least when you know that you are living in the false answer this does it not often happen that you know that what you are doing is not proper and you still indulge in it does it happen or not don't you willingly embrace the false living in the truth means to not to willingly embrace the false and when you are willingly embracing the false it is not without reason the false is both tempting and overpowering and therefore you are overrun by the false embracing the truth means resisting the false even when it is about to run all over you the temptation is big the fear is high the drunkenness is severe and you still say hold on i'm not giving in that is what is meant by practicing the truth the absolute truth cannot be practiced you are right but then there is nothing called the absolute the absolute is a pure nothing there is no point even bringing it to this piece of paper the absolute the absolute is absolutely pointless pointless meaningless useless the absolute to you nilesh is useful only via its blessings just as the sun is very very dangerous if approached but the blessings of sun are life giving what is then to practice the truth 
reject the false to the best of your capability reach your personal best fourth floor reject the false to the best of your capability reach your personal best fourth floor let the ego rise from low to high मृत्यु और मां अमृतम गमे लेट देयर बी एन असेंशन दिस असेंशन प्लीज रिमेंबर इज नॉट फ्रॉम द रिलेटिव टू द एब्सोल्यूट यू कैन नॉट रीच द एब्सोल्यूट एज द रिजल्ट ऑफ सम प्रोसेस यू कैन नॉट रीच फ्रॉम द रिलेटिव टू द एब्सोल्यूट कैन यू If you can reach to any place from the relative, that place will be relative to the relative, and therefore the place too would be relative. Are you getting it? If you say that you are trying to rise from the relative to the absolute, then the absolute is being reached relative to the relative plane. Therefore, the absolute is not absolute at all. The absolute too becomes relative, which means. no ascension can happen from the relative to the absolute all ascension is from relative to the relative and that is dharma that is what is spirituality all about rise relative to what you have so far been become better become better become better this will not bring the truth to you the truth is beyond you but if you just do the best that is possible to your little capacity you find that the sun is shining the great task has already been done by the lord what is the great task the sun has been brought to your house the great task has already been done now just a little has been left to you just a little not even a fraction less than a billionth part of the entire work has been left to you what has been left to you i have brought the mighty sun down to your terrace just a little thing now you have to do just a little thing now you have to do what is it that you have to do climb up to the terrace please that is what is meant by living in the truth be as less false as possible truth you cannot know of know of but by the virtue of the truth reject whatever falsenesses you detect in your life be determined wherever you would detect falseness in your life you would not support it no falseness remains in your life without your consent and that takes you to the next word that you are curious about contentment you are saying how can one practice contentment and if one is practicing contentment then one is already contented and so on and so forth none of that forget contentment look at its opposite dissatisfaction hunger restlessness they don't just come you invite them and then you hold their hand and make them stay contentment is an absolute and therefore we do not know of it no point talking of it look at discontentment is discontentment just random no you power it you support it in other words you choose to be discontented practicing contentment means not choosing to be discontented it is within your powers if you can choose to be discontented you can also choose to not to be discontented right wait there is a difference between choosing to be contented 
and choosing to be not to be discontented. They appear the same. Choosing to be contented and choosing to be not discontented. They appear same. They are not. Because you can never choose to be contented. Contented is meant contentment is beyond your choice. The absolute cannot be chosen. The absolute cannot be chosen but the false can be rejected. And there is a great difference between these two. Spiritual seekers often confuse these two. The truth cannot be chosen but by the blessings of the truth the false can be rejected. And there is a great difference. Those who say we are seeking the truth will always return empty handed because the truth cannot be sought. Those who say we are trying to choose the truth will always find that they have no choice available because there is no truth to really put your finger on and choose. But those who are more sincere and more practical, they say the truth, we do not know of that. Contentment, we have never experienced that. It is beyond experience. But what we very well know is that this discontentment is intolerable. It is hell. Therefore, we will not accept and support discontentment. We reject it. That's what spiritual practice is all about. So when it is said, Nilesh, practice contentment, it merely means reject discontentment. And you do have the power to reject discontentment because you are the one who chooses discontentment in the first place. If you can choose it, you can unchoose it. Let's be fair. Don't cite your meekness. Don't say, ah, I can choose it, but I can't reject it. Not true, not true at all. You have the choice available. You'll have to accept the responsibility. Huh? And if you do not have a choice available, why are you always busy thinking? When it comes to spiritual matters, you start quoting your incapability with respect to choice. You say, we are deterministically handicapped. We cannot determine anything on our own. The universe is a random machine that operates on its own. Human free will has no value. Ah, right. Very scholarly. But when it comes to ordering a pizza, mm -hmm. you suddenly want the menu. Mm -hmm. What for? If there is no choice available, what do you want the menu for? Why don't you just go on a blind date? You probably do sometimes. Why don't you just marry blindly? Then you say, I want to exercise my choice. If you really believe you have no choice, why do you ask for the menu? Why do you look into your wardrobe? Why don't you just wear the linen on the bed? Hmm? Wrap it around and go to your office. We are all choiceless. You have all kinds of wraps floating in the market. Now you will have an employee wrap. Choiceless wrap. Choice is there. Choice is there. Practicing truth means choosing to reject the false. Practicing contentment means choosing to reject discontentment, stupid dissatisfaction. Now you know why the name of the Lord is important. I'll tell you why. 
little bit remained in the story you know the fellow on the ground floor was both hopeless and exhausted but he kept saying ek omkar ek omkar ek omkar and that brought him up to the fourth floor that's why the name of the lord is important you know the fellow on the ground floor had no hope left of seeing any warmth or sunshine but he kept saying namo aditya i pray to the sun i pray to the sun and the name of sun enabled him to pull himself up to the fourth floor where sun actually was if you remember the sun right through your journey in darkness that enables you to emerge faster out of darkness what else would help you cut through the darkness it is the name of the sun not only must you suffer you must also remember that there is warmth beyond the coldness of suffering that has to be remembered and that remembrance is called the name of the lord there is suffering and i am reciting continuously that there is life beyond suffering that has to be recited otherwise your suffering would turn into dejection you would become hopeless towards the world but you would also become hopeless towards liberation and that is very very dangerous there are people who get beaten up so badly by life that they turn totally hopeless towards the world but they also are left with no hope of liberation no on one hand you must be very very hopeless towards the world on the other hand you must be very hopeful towards liberation being hopeless and i have spoken quite a lot on it being hopeless is important it is equally important to be hopeful but not towards the world towards liberation that is called shraddha that is called faith hopelessness towards the world but determined hopefulness towards liberation now you know what the name of the lord means namo aditya namo aditya namo aditya it's all so dark and it's so cold but i'm still reciting the name of the lord and that will take me to sunshine and that indeed does take you to the sunshine what else can it is important to recite that name within and also physically try that it would help it is not sometimes sufficient to just recite the great name internally you must also bring it to your lips recite it physically hear the sound something will change within just hear that sound say something to yourself in the middle of great depression you will suddenly find light just take that name take the holy name try that when you are feeling down out dejected utter the holy name hear the sound and see the change